I've heard this called the king of reloading kits. We're gonna open it up, take a look, and later on put it to work. Guy Miner here from UltimateReloader.com. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at the Rock Chucker Supreme Master Reloading Kit. We're gonna open this up, and later on we'll be putting it to work. Okay, we got the kit out of the box, organized it a bit. This is a very comprehensive kit. It comes with everything you need, except it does not have the shell holders and it does not have the dies. That's for you to figure out which cartridge you're gonna load and get the appropriate ones for that. So just taking a look at these pieces, I'm not gonna get into detail on how to assemble them or how they're used right now. Got our case loading block. We have here some case prep tools. Got the lube pad, a little bit of lube. Big, sturdy looking for uh, tool here for chamfering and deburring. A nice handle and a couple of different size brushes. The Uniflow powder measure, which I'm very familiar with. Funnel, a couple of different sizes here. Very, very good uh, piece of gear. We'll be getting into that later. This is the, uh, this is the Rock Chucker Supreme Press. It's an improvement over the old Rock Chucker, which again, I'm very familiar with, and I'm looking forward to using this. We've got the assembly here for your on-press priming, if you wanna do that, and if you don't wanna do that, they've included their very nice hand priming tool, which is a good alternative. Uh, I usually do like to do a hand priming tool instead of on-press priming. I'll get this one set up at home though for that. And of course, we've got a real nice uh, balance scale here that we'll be able to set up and use for a large variety. This will handle little tiny powder charges and very big powder charges too. It comes with all the instructions that you're gonna need to put this thing together and use it. And also includes very important thing, Spears reloading manual. Reloading manual is well worth well worth your time and effort to go ahead and get into and learn the safety steps and what all you need to know before you start reloading. What I'm gonna do now is go ahead, take this stuff home, set it up on my own home bench, and get to work loading some rifle ammo. So I took all this RCBS gear home, set it up on my own bench there, and set about doing some loading with it. Now, I had to take a look and see what do I need to load? What was I low on? Well, earlier this year, we had worked up a really good load for the 30 6 with 130 grain Barnes TTSX bullet. We did a story on that. The velocity out of that is just phenomenal. The recoil is pretty mild, and it's a proven big game bullet, which is amazing at that light weight, but it did really good. So I said, I'm going to load some more of those because I was a little low on them. So go ahead and uh, finish off my supply of those and, and uh, load them all up. And of course, it went well. Now, one of the reasons it went well is because RCBS and I are old friends. I learned how to load on one back in the 70s. It was my dad's. Um, he had an RCBS Junior, I think was the press name. And of course, when I moved out and was on my own, I had, uh, I had a couple of those little Lee loaders that you beat on with a mallet. And that was how I was reloading. And then I had a chance to buy a used RCBS rock chucker back in the 80s. So I seized that opportunity and started loading with the uh, big green machine, the rock chucker, for years, for decades. I think that was the only loading that I did for at least 15 or 20 years was on that press. And that thing and I became old buddies. We loaded our NRA high power uh, match ammunition on it. I loaded my hunting ammunition on it. Loaded everything on it, pistol, rifle, whatever. Uh, so when I brought this home, it was interesting to see it on my, everything all green there on my bench again, because working with Ultimate Reloader here, I get a chance to work with loading gear from everybody, all these different manufacturers, it's fantastic. But I don't get to go back to good old green stuff very often. And uh, the RCBS was, was pleasant to have on the bench again and to start using it. It's different from my 40-year-old gear 
but not dramatically. It's like a refinement, an improvement. Everything on this is a little bit better than my old gear. It's more comfortable to use, more ergonomic. You know, the handle's better. The primer catch system seems to work better. Uh, everything just, just functions just a little bit better. Some of that could be 40 years of wear and tear on the old stuff, but I think overall, uh, most of this gear has been improved over the years and it was actually working better. The first impressions I got with the press itself is it was still that good old big cast iron, heavy duty, strong stuff that RCBS is known for. And it was nice to see some subtle changes on it that made it easier to use. Uh, very reliable, trouble free, trouble free loading. Um, I find that a setup like this on your traditional O-ring frame press is best for rifle loading where you're probably not going to be loading hundreds and hundreds of cartridges. Uh, you're probably going to be loading some smaller quantities because it is a little bit slow. And it's not my favorite way to reload like pistol cartridges, for instance, where I want to load you know, 100 at a minimum, maybe 500, maybe 1,000 rounds. It's pretty slow on a single stage press. Can you do it? Sure, absolutely. I did for many years. Not necessarily the best though. Best thing, loading rifle ammunition, center fire rifle ammo. And what's nice about the, the rock chuckers, it's got tons of leverage, very easy for resizing, and a big enough opening in here, you can resize some very large cases. I've done 375 H&H on it. I've concentrated with the uh, 30 6 though. Okay, a little bit more about the load. Normally with a 30 6 I load my hunting ammo with 165, 180, 200 grain bullets even, and I have loaded some 220s. So on the heavier end, and usually using at least an H4350 powder, slower, you know, the slower ones, H4350, Reloader 22, Ramshot Hunter, that kind of thing. Well, this time I was going light. I want a light, fast bullet, uh, monometal bullet, all copper. I went with that Barnes 130 grain TTSX, which tested real well for us. And it is no problem with Varget getting that thing up over 3,200 feet per second, which uh, is a pretty amazing figure for me for a 30 6 It uh, really surprised me. Also, I have to admit, I enjoyed the light recoil from that light bullet. It was, uh, it was a nice sensation. My powder charge on this was 56 and a half grains of Varget. Now, that's a max load according to Barnes. It's over max according to some other sources. So that would be a load work up to carefully and stop before you get there if it's giving you any kind of pressure signs. I don't normally use Varget in the 30-06, but with this weight bullet, it shines. It did a really fine job. The accuracy from this load has also been exemplary. So it's a good load and I wanted to put more of them in there. I did take that load bear hunting this fall. However, I did not get a shot at a bear, so I can't report on anything there. So I've been loading 30-06 actually since the 60s, helping out grandpa and my dad on their gear. And it's no stranger to me. Of course I have RCBS die set for the 30-06 that I got quite a while ago because I load this cartridge a lot and I hunt with it a lot. Um, it's just a good old RCBS two die set, one for sizing and deep priming and the other one for seating the bullet. They work perfectly, uh, put together some good ammo. And of course, with that, when the 30 out 6 I'm using RCBS number three shell holder. Okay, you've seen the gear. I had it at home and set it up and loaded on it. So let's go ahead and take this step by step through the loading process with a few 30 out 6 pieces of brass here that have been once fired and cleaned. Time to get rolling. The first thing we're gonna do is our case prep. Now often, in my own reloading, I use a wax type of case lube. However, the RCBS comes with its own lube in, the, in this kit and its own little pad for this. So this is how we do it. We'll go ahead, put not a lot, just a little bit of lube on there. And we'll actually smear it on into the pad. One of the things to think about with case lube 
is a little bit goes a long way and that's that's a good thing if you use too much you can get it on the case shoulders very easily and then that leads to them winding up with a dent in the shoulder uh, so we're just going to go ahead and take these and I'll go ahead and do it one by one you can actually set up a whole bunch of them if you want and roll them back and forth but I'm just going to roll these back and forth there that's all it needs just a little bit on there we want to do inside the case mouth and you see I put just a tiny tiniest bit of lube on there go ahead and run that around in there a little bit and it's good to go it is ready to be resized and deprimed and like I said we can do several of them at once a little bit back and forth there hit the neck That makes a tremendous difference on pulling the case back out of the sizing die and over that neck expander. And I already got this one. So now they're all cleaned and lubed. And what I'm going to do next is do just a little bit of work here with my chamfering and deburring tool on each one. Do not overdo this. There's no reason to. By the way, I got to hand it to our CBS. This is much bigger than the old ones, and uh, it's a lot easier to get a hold of. I like it. Very comfortable to use. Do a little, I forgot to do the deburr on that first one. There we go. So this is chamfering, and all you're trying to do is break the edge of that case mouth and then take any burrs off the outside. That's all you're doing. It does not have to... Don't sit there and try to use this as a reamer or use this as a substitute, as a case trimmer or something. That doesn't work out real well. For case prep, that's all we're going to do. Time to move on to sizing and depriming. Okay, we're going to take our cleaned and lubed cases. They're all ready to go. And I'm going to go ahead and run them on in here in the RCBS. We're going to size deprime and reprime all right here on the press. This has actually got a pretty cool little on-press priming system. Case goes up and it is resized, popped out the old primer. I take the new primer and insert it right here. Watch as this comes down and that primer arm goes in there and then I give it just a little bit of a shove there at the end, seat that primer, my case is good to go. And let's do that again. I could also put this, uh, put this new primer in here when it's in this position, which in some ways is a little bit easier. This is not as fast as most of the off-press priming systems or more automated type priming system, but it does work very well. resizing, pop that old primer out, come on back down, and let's seat the new primer in the case. Take it out, and then I do a quick run across there with my finger or my thumb, make sure it's level, and I can show that also on there. So it's nice and straight, flat on the bottom, primer is not poking up proud, it's just fine, it's all done. Put a new primer in there, get that in place for us. Good. Resized and deprimed. Come on back down and seat the new primer. The only real disadvantage to this is that you're handling the lubed case and your primer. You could contaminate your primer with the lube. I've actually never had a problem with that. 
um, but it could happen. So rather than risk the contaminating your primer with the lube from the shell casing, that's a good time to consider the use of a hand primer and prime off the press. There we go. They are all resized, deprimed, and reprimed. Okay, it's time to get some of our Varget into our 30-06 cases. And what I did here was I took the uh, mechanical scale and I went ahead and used this little dial over here on the end to get it level, it zeroed out, and now I've got it set for 56.5 grains of Varget, which is proven safe in my rifle, but remember, be careful and work up to that if you even want to go up to that max level load. Then, I was trying to dispense some powder charges with this mounted on the bench, but we didn't have a really good solid setup to do that. A um, couple of options there are. One, RCBS makes a very nice elevated powder stand that would work just terrific on that. I've used it before, they work fine. Um, but I want to stick mostly with the equipment provided in this particular kit. So I went ahead and moved it on up here on top of the press. I'm actually using my seating die to hold that powder measure there. And we'll go ahead and get these cases charged. I made another addition to the, the kit though that I'm using and that was to pull my old uh, RCBS powder trickler out and add it to the kit or to my, to my setup here because what I'm trying to do is dispense just slightly under 56.5 grains and then bring it up to that exactly by using the powder trickler. You can get around that uh, pretty handily by using a ball type powder. I found when I'm using Ramshot Hunter powder, it meters very, very nicely. Most of the ball powders do. This is a stick powder. They're not big sticks. Varget flows pretty good uh, through a measure like this, but they are sticks and it's going to vary a little bit more than typical ball powder would. The Uniflow powder measure should be very familiar with it to a lot of people that may have used the RCBS before. Works out real well. We do have adjustments up here for either dispersing a very large amount of powder, like if you're filling up a 300 Remington Ultra Mag, or actually it goes all the way down to tiny little charges for shooting a, uh, oh, a 38 Special or a 45 ACP case. So let's get going, get some of these charged up. and watching the scale as it's trying to balance, it's showing me that this charge is a little bit light, so I'm gonna use the powder trickler to bring that charge up. And you can see it's just about perfect. Now, you've seen the pictures of my bench at home, and I actually have the scale raised up higher to about eye level where I can just look straight across at it without having to hunch all down like that. I don't have that set up here on the bench in front of me. So that is a correct powder charge for our case. Go ahead and use the included funnel from the kit. There we go. Again, it's a little light, just like I set it up to be. And now I can get that exact. 56.5 grains. I started using Hodgdon's Varget a long time ago for my 308 match loads. When it came out and I became aware of Varget, um, it was a huge improvement with my match shooting. I got much better velocities 
and just as good of accuracy. I was doing a lot of 600 yard and even 600 meter matches at that point and it worked out great. I could shoot all year round, very temperature insensitive. Also, it turns out that makes for great powder for hunting loads for the 308. And now, for the 30-06, now that I've discovered this new high-speed, fast little bullet, it's pretty impressive when your 30-06 is getting 3,200 feet per second or more with a real live hunting bullet. Again, a little bit light. And let's bring that up. There we go. They're all charged and ready to seat the bullets. All righty then. This is uh, probably the easiest and my favorite part in the reloading process. Seating these bullets, nice and easy. There we go. Completed cartridge, I like that. This is one of the things I like about using a single stage press for my reloading, is I get to inspect everything along the way, get hands on with my ammunition. No mistakes, no bloopers, good quality control all the way through. If you do have a mistake, it's real easy to stop. It's not like you've got some automated machine here. You're just putting the ammo together. Step by step. Oh, something I forgot to mention for this, you can just flip the primer arm out of the way. That might make things a little easier. Smooth things out a bit. Alrighty, there we go. <laughs> Barnes 130 grain TTSXs in our 30-06. We have completed that reloading process using all this pretty darn nice RCBS gear. That's bringing us here to the conclusion of our video. And I gotta tell you, uh, the RCBS stuff, when I took it home to my place and set it up, I was right at home with it. It looked right, it felt right, and there it was. Um, and coming to a conclusion on all this, all this gear, I look at it as all of this is just improvements over RCBS gear that I've been using for decades. And they've updated some things, made some things simpler, a little bit better, um, without losing that strength and the leverage, those things that RCBS rock chuckers have been known for for a very long time. This is capable of handling most of the cartridges that you might want to reload outside of the very, very giant ones. And, and again, I don't think it's the best setup for like high volume loading. It's kind of a slow, one at a time sort of a thing. And you wind up with that. The way I tend to do my loading for my own shooting sports is we have these long cold winters up here in Washington. Uh, lots of snow, gets pretty cold over here on our side of the Cascades. And so I tend to stay indoors, do my loading, figure out what I'm gonna have my loads for, because I'm planning my hunts months and months in advance, maybe a year in advance. And so I wanna get enough ammo loaded up that not only for my hunting, but also for practice sessions, because I do like to practice with my hunting rifles. A, I just enjoy shooting them. Um, B, it's good to be good with that rifle. You go out there and you've got that nice muley in your sights, or maybe it's a bear or an elk or whatever, you don't wanna miss it because you haven't done enough practice. So I tend to do a lot of my reloading in the winter. I may make several hundred 30-06 cartridges and set aside 
40 or 50 of them for, you know, right during hunting season, give me some extra ammo and all that in case the rifle gets out of zero and has to be re-zeroed. It's always nice to have a few extra cases with you, especially if you're driving, you know, maybe a thousand miles to a hunt someplace. Um, and if you're out there in the middle of nowhere, getting more cartridges is tough. So I stockpile my ammo and then dole it out over the year using it. Uh, I'll do a lot of practice with my 22s early in the season. And then as the hunting season starts coming closer and closer, I'll move into shooting my 30-06, 25-06, 7 mag, whatever I'm going to hunt with, and start using that more and more often. The RCBS is good gear for putting that all together. Um, it's backed up by a great warranty. They're a pretty darn good company on that stuff. And they've been doing this for a long time now, since 1943. I think they've got it down real well, and I'm happy to see that the quality is remaining very nice and high. What I wanna know is are you using RCBS gear for some of your hand loading? How long have you been using it? And have you used their Supreme Master Kit? It is, uh, to me, it looks like a real good way to get started. There's a few things you probably want to add, but it's a good way to get started. So if you've used that, or you want to use it, or you've got a question or two about it, drop a comment and we'll have a discussion. That's it for this video, and it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content and Instagram, make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're gonna to wanna to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. If you want to learn lucrative gunsmithing like what I show here on the channel, including building custom rifles and Cerakote plus a whole bunch more, you're going to want to check out the Colorado School of Trades, schooloftrades.edu. Thanks again for watching.